Hello and welcome back to uh, another video in my ICE YouTube tutorial series. Uh, today I'm going to be going over if statements, else, else statements, and basic variable manipulation. What an if statement does is uh, checks to see if something's true and then outputs, uh, does some lines of code I should say, if it is true. So what that means is we can actually respond and manipulate uh, the program based on what input we're being given. So we can say, you know, if the enter key is being pressed, do this. Which helps us because without it, it would be like a movie or a slideshow where you can't change anything. It would just be displaying without any user interaction. So the syntax for an if statement is if, and then your argument here, this is what is being checked to see if it's true. And then as many lines of code that you want that will be uh, executed if this is true. And then an end statement. So we have that basic thing. And let's just add in a message that will uh, display to the screen if this statement is true. And I'm just going to have it say, true. So when you have your arguments, uh, we'll get into all the logical operators you can use and uh, like all this stuff. But what you need to know is if it's true, the calculator evaluates it as a 1. If it's false, it's a 0. So the simplest way we can uh, make this be true is by putting in a 1 because it'd be like saying if 3 equals 3. That's true, so it's 1. Uh, so 1 is just always going to be true, 0 will always be false. So we want to actually put something like if 1 in our program because we know it's going to execute. So we might as well just put display true instead of the if statement. But we're going to do it uh, right now to check if the if statement works. Okay, let's run test and we get true displayed. But what if it was false? What if we put in if 0? Well, we're not going to get it displayed. But you can see that even though it didn't display, we still get the screen being paused. So what I does is if uh, this is true, then it also it continues. But if it's false, it also continues. So uh, if it's true, all this code gets run. And if it's false, this code, skip this, and then this code gets run. So you could have... Um, a hundred false if statements and then at the end like a display hello world and it'll skip over all those if statements and display the hello world uh, so it'll continue running after the if statements what if we wanted to have multiple outputs of the if statement so that's where else comes in what else does is it says uh, the syntax for it is very similar to an if uh, end. So we did if end earlier. Uh, with else, you just have to throw it in the middle of an if and an end. And what it does is it says, if this is true, then do this. But if it's not true, if it's false, do this. And in both cases, this can be as many lines of code as you want. This can be as many lines of code as you want. Uh, so you have a lot of flexibility there. Now, we might not always want to set it up like this because this is like black and white. There's two options. It's true or it's false, and it'll give us an output either way. So we might not, we might not always want there to be only two options, but in this case, uh, we do. So I could use a display false here, but um, so if it's true, it'll be doing this. So this should say that it's false. And I'm actually going to use the output command because I didn't go over it uh, in the text video. Uh, output, you give uh, a Y coordinate, then an X coordinate, and then text. And this is for the home screen, which means that you have 26 across and 10 down. So if I wanted it to be 5 down and like 15 across, which should put it like over here. 5 down, 15 across, and then our text, which is going to say false. Okay, so if we run this right now, we should see this means it's false, so it skips the true statement and does the false statement.
and we get that false and remember it's uh, five down and it, if you're at 15 across I think so that's output output can be helpful uh, because it gives you more control than display does and now if we change this to a one we're gonna get our true statement again and you can see we get the true okay so this is all helpful but we don't want to just put a zero and one in the program because that doesn't really it doesn't help us in any way so I'm going to create uh, an integer and I'm going to compare that uh, using the if statement uh, so we're going to get into variables later but basically what you need to know is you can store integers into uh, your own variables you can name them what you want and like I said that's gonna get covered later but for right now let's just store 7 in A so you can use any of the uh, TI basic variables A through theta uh, so we'll just do 7 stored in A and now let's compare it to something so let's say if A and then say we wanted to say equals uh, so if we wanted to say if a equals 8, this is obviously not true because remember it's like um, if 7, we set a to 7, that's what 7 stored in a did. Um, and I didn't really want to go over that because that's going to, I'm going to cover that later. But 7 stored in a, so a equals 7. So if we would then plug in the value of a, like if we think about it, 7 equals 8, well that's not true. So if we ran this, it would make it false. So we can use variables in if statements. And I just want to point out, um, if you've programmed in other programming languages, a lot of them use uh, a double equal sign to indicate uh, like testing for if statements because uh, one equal sign is used for assignment, but to assign value values to variables, we use the store arrow, which is why we only need one equal sign here. Now we can also do not equals, uh, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, or less than or equal to. I'm not going to go over those because uh, I would hope that you know what they all do. Um, and then let's do some of these. So, uh, and and or. Uh, what you can do is you can chain multiple of these arguments together. So I can say if a equals a, but what if I also want to test something else? Well, I can say and a let's do let's do another variable three stored in b so if a equals eight and b is less than a so this will say um b so a is not equal to eight so that gives us a false then it'll say and, and then b is less than a. b is less than a, so that's true. So we have false and true. Well, the way an and statement works is both sides have to be true for it to evaluate to true, which means that this will be false because one side was false. So let's run ice, and it's false. But uh, if we change this to a equals 7, we have true and true, so uh, it'll be true. Okay, now instead of saying and, which is both, we can say one or the other, which is or. Uh, so this will say if this is true or this is true, then display true. So this is false, but this one's true, and because one is true, that's enough which means that we'll get a true out of this statement true and we can chain multiple of these together so I could say or and then another argument or I could chain it with an and uh, and another argument and you can do this as much as you want but you want to keep in mind that uh, if you're going to chain these together you're going to want to use parentheses uh, ice does do PEMDAS uh, or order of operations 
So parentheses will come first. And if you're gonna chain these together, you probably wanna add those just so that uh, you make sure that what you want to happen and what order is happening in the order that you want it to. Okay, so XOR is another option that we have. What XOR does is it says if one or the other is true, um, but not both. So that's true because one statement is true. But if both of them were true, so A equals 7, that's true. B is less than A, that's true. Um, this isn't going uh, to work. Well, it is going to work, but it's going to give us false. Uh, so XOR means exclusive OR, and uh, what it does is it says if one is true but not the other, then uh, it'll give us uh, our output. Okay, so if A equals 8 is false, but what if we wanted to uh, take the opposite of that? So I can say if not, and then A equals true. I mean A equals 8. Uh, so what this is saying is it says take the opposite of whatever this is and then evaluate the expression with that. So we have false, negate that, and it's true. Uh, so this will give us a true output, even though we put in A equals 8. Okay, so that's about all I wanted to go over in this video. Now that we know what if statements are, uh, and we've learned about the arguments for them, the conditionals, we can use the same conditional logic in loops, which I will go over in a separate video. So thank you for watching, and... Keep your eyes peeled for the next video.